I need to I need to talk about something here. Or did you want to? Did you have something you I wanted? Got a little to... thing here just to get your Good. just to get you in a bad mood. Just to piss me off. Good. This will work. So, did you see Bill Murray? This no, week's Bill Murray. Yeah. No, I don't watch him. I don't watch oh, television. Good. I don't watch television. I'm done. You're gonna like this one. Oh, jeez. So, play. There's actually two of them. There's mm. one that's a little, that's a mild one. They had a climate change guy on, and it was kind of weird to listen to this clip, uh, where where the guy where Mar asks the guy, is it, or is it too late? Is it too late? We're all gonna die. And the guy says, No, it's not too late. And Mar in the background goes, Oh, good. And it's just like, geez, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> is that guy? the one I got to play? Well, play that one for the, just that's the teaser for the one that you're going to get a kick out of. He probably can achieve that if he actually implements the, everything he laid out. And he said, he said the time, <laughs> I love this quote, he said the, the time for waiting for the flat earth society to adjourn is over. <laughs> um, that, that's the kind of red meat I like to eat up. But, uh, <laughs> you know, is it too late? I mean, the time he was talking about? No. It no, is it's not, not too late. It is not too late. Great. We absolutely have this within our power to uh, limit Great. climate change to horrible levels. It's like it's almost like, do, will they still have chocolate shakes at the at the Burger King? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. So he, now this is the one. This is going to make you. Uh, no. no. Mar. 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 On, guess what? Mar. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right, I bring this up because besides the heroic Wendy Davis, there were two stories in the news last week dealing with teenage sex. And just to be safe, the Vatican issued a denial. No. Yeah, you'll get over it. Um, one story was about Plan B. That's the morning after pill. That's the, the FDA says is safer than Motrin and which any American can now buy over the counter just like milk and ammo. And because it's a birth control pill, it will prevent abortions. Now, the other story was about the vaccine for HPV, which is the STD that leads to cervical cancer, and how that vaccine, since its introduction in 2006, has reduced teenage infections by 56%. All good news, right? Wrong! No, over in family values world, Things like Plan B and the HPV vaccine are bad because they remove God's natural intended punishments for sluts who put out. A, being saddled with a baby you don't want, or B, stricken with a horrible disease. <laughs> you don't think that's how these people think? Then tell me why conservatives always couch their objections to the HPV vaccine in parental rights but never complain about other state-mandated vaccines their kids have to get. Why not throw a shit fit about the measles vaccine? Or mumps, rubella, whooping cough, chicken pox. Because you don't get those diseases from screwing or yodeling in the canyon. <laughs> laugh track, by the way. Total laugh track. They do not want a vaccine for HPV because that's the good kind of cancer that makes hussies think twice about going all the way. That is terrible. Ron Paul, a fucking doctor, said this vaccine, which prevents thousands of cases of a fatal disease, was, quote, not good medicine. And Michelle Bachman said it caused mental retardation. Her source? The New England Journal of a lady who stopped me on the street and told me that. Yes, <laughs> Republicans actually think this vaccine encourages girls to have sex because now there are no consequences. Just the way when I, I got my first tetanus shot, I couldn't wait to jab rusty nails into my feet. <laughs> it was a freebie. Oh. I knew you'd love it. He is the first on the train. <laughs> He's got a first-class ticket. Yeah, you know, I can't even get into... How ass! <laughs> hey, John, fuck I you, fuck you. You knew, you knew. I love the way the guy does. He takes. Air. It's just like uh, it's so f for. It's like he's on Mars or Neptune with his analysis. This is like his analysis. But then, but then the and laugh track or not, the result is the same. The audience is like, oh, 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 oh. 
And then, and then the hatred for people who have a different opinion and the science is in and you're a moron. And OK, so this this leads me into what he's he start off with the heroic Wendy Davis. Yes, I knew that you could make a new segue. Yeah. Oh. So thank you. It's almost like we planned this, which, of course, we didn't. Because you know, I don't not, have to. I'm st- the universe <laughs> plans it for us. I'm, I'm still picking my jaw up from the floor after that clip. I need to. I'm going to recompose myself by playing a little medley of uh, your mainstream media and the heroic Wendy Davis, senator, st- state senator in Tejas. It was a live and unfolding political drama. A woman Woo. who chose to make a stand in front of her fellow lawmakers and a viewing audience that grew based on word of mouth and social media. It went on until the early hours of this morning in the Texas State Senate, and by the time it was over, a lot of people knew the name Wendy Davis. Our report tonight from NBC's Chris Jansen. The raucous cheers from the Texas State House capped a long, dramatic session that had started almost 13 hours earlier. Democrats were fighting a bill they said would close 37 of the state's 42 abortion clinics. Republicans so, said uh, it would make them safer and expected uh, a win. The- then came Senator Wendy Davis. I'm rising on the floor today. In an elegant white suit and comfy pink sneakers, the marathon Senate. began. Uh, Hundreds of supporters packed in the gallery and lined up outside, erupted, hoping to stall the vote drowning out attempts to pass the bill. By then, nearly 200,000 viewers had logged into a live stream of the event. Amid the chaos, the bill didn't get signed in time. An unexpected victory for a woman who had defied expectations before. A single mother of two who graduated with honors from Harvard Law School and today a rising political star. Now, what I want to talk about today, because I follow this and this, of course, happened uh, over a week ago, and I've done a lot of uh, thinking about this, a lot of talking to people, and, and, and I, I, I was trying to figure out why it bothered me so much. And it starts off with, I love protests. I love it when people get raucous, and, there were, and you see the video, there were hundreds of people uh, inside the, the, the Capitol here, the Capitol building, and you know yelling and screaming, and I love this. But I have to say, you are nothing more than a bunch of icon changers, and you're pathetic, and I'll tell you why. When you hear all the news reports about this particular bill, Senate Bill 5, and I have to ask you, John, what is your impression that this bill is about? I know you haven't read it. I have, of course. Yeah. What is your impression of the bill? And, and the controversy surrounding it. Well, you know, this is funny because I, I didn't think much about this whole thing or, or the bill. So it seemed like a Texas bill. It was about Texas. And there's Wendy Davis who's gotten a little attention for herself. I thought she was just a publicity seeker. And I didn't look into it. My if it's just, uh, uh, just from what I got from the mainstream media, uh, although, again, like I said, I didn't even bother with it, was that it uh, closed some abortion clinics and uh, – it was they hate women in Texas or something. That's about all. Like that's that's it. Right. So the protests, uh, and it was interesting that the that all of the news reports only bring up the closure of um, uh, of clinics and the reason why. And and by the way, I there's by the way, no, there are that many clinics there, but okay. Well, and it's also um, this is a meme that has been propagated. There is no, to my knowledge, actual calculation of how many clinics would close. Someone said, oh. If you implement these rules, and the rules are um, uh, certain uh, standards for the uh, for the clinics, and they and uh, predominantly they have to be within thirty miles of a hospital, uh, and therefore a number of them would have to close, unless of course they I don't know like improve their situation. So, but that's not what these people were protesting. That's what's interesting about this, because I'm so convinced that, and this is a lot of battleground Texas women, you know, the ones like that. The Right, which I, the I signed bo- up for their uh, newsletter, and I started getting it, and then the next right. thing you know, I you get- unsigned up because it's horrible <laughs> right. spammers. Right, so a lot of battleground Texas women were there. They were all saying, men, particularly Republican men, stay out of my womb. And uh, so they weren't they, – they, it's like you want to control our bodies, control when we want to have an abortion, and you want to make it impossible for us to have an abortion. And, and I'm looking – okay, I have to read this bill. What is in this? Because 
all I'm hearing from women around me who have not read the bill, who only get their information from mainstream media, yeah, the fucking Republicans, they want to tell me what I have a baby or not. Okay, you're angry. I get it. You don't like men telling you what to do. So the bill, um, it specifies very clearly, uh, and that's part two of the bill, by the way. It's, it's, it's almost a minor part uh, about what that a clinic has to adhere to uh, certain standards, which I think is kind of fair, but you know, there's all of this mm, pontification that because of the proximity, it'll have to be, you know, they're going to have to close so many. I mean, look, you can drive anywhere in Texas in a day. You know, if so, if you if you get an abortion, I mean, are we in? Are we truly in the Stone Ages in Texas? That the the distance you have to drive, and people in Texas drive for days to get anywhere, that if you really feel you need an abortion, I mean, it's, okay, it's, for some reason this is a problem. I'll, I'll give you that. The main part of the bill was about the, and this goes, this goes to the core, the core of the argument in America, Roe versus Wade, etc., is when is human life a life? At what point is, is, a, is a life a human being? And what, does that human being or life have rights? And I was f- astounded to find that what was being proposed was a 20-week cutoff. That's five months. I, I was wow. So it, uh, and this is Texas. I'm like, this is this is supposed to be the most hick, redneck, crazy ass Republican state in the universe, and they're actually saying. Well, if you want to have an abortion after five months of being pregnant, you've had five months, and typically you don't announce a pregnancy until three months, but then five months. I remember when, when, when my ex-wife was pregnant, five months. This, we were talking to this, to this thing like it was a kid. Five months is a big deal. I personally feel that then you know there's something that has rights, but that's, it's kind of irrelevant. Five months, and they're not saying it's forbidden, not saying that at all. They're saying, um, you know, it, it, then we have to have some questions. You know, then there has to be some really good reasons. If you've been pregnant for five months, you've had five months to do this. Now, women are get insane when you, and at least these women, when you when you put any type of restriction on it. And I personally, you know, I've changed my views throughout the years. I'm thinking, well, you know, if you really look at pure human rights, you know, do, do the human rights start when you pop out of the womb, or does it start earlier? But that's my personal conviction, doesn't matter. The problem I have is that here are these icon changers who go there and they're supporting their mythical hero, Wendy Davis, and her shoes. You go look at the Amazon review for these shoes, like a thousand comments, and one's more hilarious than the next. And I'm like, where is the protest for all the real outrage in this country? And why are you not, why do I not see you come out for that? You come out for this, you spend 10 hours of your day hooting and hollering about something that you really is, is very manageable, I believe. And you go home and you change your icon and you tweet ter- Sarah Palin that she's an idiot. But do you ever complain about the other things that happen with your body and your reproductive rights? Do you ever protest about the fluoride and other crap they're putting in your water, which directly affects your your child or may, can even give you spontaneous abortions, G- genetically modified shit in your food, chemtrails, you're being sprayed like bugs. And then if you do decide to have a child, do you, do you go out there and protest for the actual vaccinations and a-holes like Bill Maher who are telling you, you to stick your children with all kinds of crap that they absolutely do, do not need? Do you ever look at what really could be beneficial and would not could be beneficial? Or then you send your kid to school and you give them psychotropic drugs like Adderall and all this other crap that they could be in the slave training institutions we call schools and then to add insult to injury because you're so apathetic about the economy and the society that you're part of and your meh attitude towards everything else except some icon changing event you allow your kids to take a job in the only place that still offers a job which is the military so they can get their shit blown off while fighting some other futurist kids in the fucking sand where's all the rioting and campaigning for that I don't see Curry's pet peeve of the day 